Hi guys. It is a lovely Sunday night <coughs> here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is the last Sunday spring of 2023 we have. That would be Sunday, June 19th, 2023. I'm still sitting here on June 19th in my sweatshirt and flannel pajamas and my Uggs on my feet, but I don't have the heater on tonight for the first time in a week here in the uh, probably the coldest spring of my entire life, the spring of 2023. So we will see where the summer of 2023 goes, but uh, guys, I'm a uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's already starting to get, even even a doomer, getting a little bit tired of the doomer porn about AI, about artificial intelligence. Uh, but I'm going to, so I wasn't going to do this, but the reason I decided to run with it is because it did have probably the single most intelligent uh, comment of any story I have ever read about artificial intelligence. And just for this one sentence, I decided to, uh, one more little slice of doomer porn about AI off of the mainstream media. This is coming from this uh, website called The Week, The Week, and that's W-E-E-K, not W-E-A-K, and there, straight ahead doomer porn, AI, the best case scenario, so we're going to hear about the best case scenario AI. In the middle of all this doom porn, we have the best case scenario. What is the best case scenario? Artificial intelligence's architects warn it could cause human extinction. I'm joking, guys. Uh, it's just, that was a little doom or humor. This is actually the name of this uh, is AI the worst case scenario for those people who still believe that human extinction is not the best case scenario, but the worst case. Apparently there are still a few humans on the planet who for some reason do not support human extinction. But anyway, for those people it's the worst case for uh, some of us doomers, anyway, I think we get it. All right, best case, worst case, we're talking about human extinction. Artificial intelligence's architects warn it could cause human extinction. How might that happen? Here is everything you need to know about AI causing human extinction, everything you need to know right here. I never need to mention it again until humans are extinct. Okay, so what are AI experts afraid of? They fear that AI will become so super intelligent and powerful that it becomes autonomous and causes mass social disruption or even the eradication of the human race. More than 350 AI researchers and engineers recently issued a warning that AI poses risks comparable to those of, quote, pandemics and nuclear war. Well, if it's like anything like the last pandemic, I guess that means AI will take out 0.2% of the uh, of humanity and the other 99.8% of humans will not be eradicated by AI if it's anything like this last uh, alleged uh, pandemic. 
comparable to those of pandemics and nuclear war. In a 2022 survey of AI experts, the median odds, the median odds they placed on AI causing human extinction or at least, quote, the severe disempowerment of the human species were 1 in 10, said Jeffrey Hinton, often called the godfather of AI who recently left Google so he could sound a warning about AI's risks, quote, this is not science fiction. A lot of smart people should be putting a lot of effort into figuring out how we deal with the possibility of AI taking over. Okay, the next question on uh, everybody's mind is when, when might this happen? <clears throat> Hinton used to think the danger was at least 30 years away, but now says AI is evolving into a super intelligence so rapidly that it may be smarter than humans in as little as five years. Well, that's a pretty low bar, uh, you know, smart as humans. Let's see, the only species that has managed one way or the other to drive itself extinct after, what, 300,000 years? Sounds pretty smart to me. That sounds like a pretty super intelligent species. How to eradicate yourself, uh, you know, and when the, when the dinosaurs were barely getting out of diapers and their reign of terror on the earth, uh, humans have come and gone. That's how smart we are anyway. So you're, you're setting a pretty low bar for yourself, Mr. AI. Okay, but be that as it may, it could happen in as little as five years. AI-powered chat GBT and GPT and Bing's chatbot already can pass the bar and medical licensing exams, including the essay questions. And on IQ test, AI scores in the 99th percentile genius level. I was told uh, back when I took this IQ test that I was in the 86th percentile that 14% of humans on the planet were smarter than I am. Uh, <laughs> but I guess uh, there's a lot, uh, lot more computers smarter than me than humans. All right. Hinton and other doomsayers, I like that, doomsayers. Hinton and other doomsayers fear the moment when artificial general intelligence, or AGI. So AI is not the problem, it's AGI. Is the moment when artificial general intelligence, or AGI, can outperform humans on almost every task. Some AI experts liken that eventuality to the sudden arrival on our planet of a superior alien race, said computer scientist Stuart Russell, another pioneering AI researcher. <clears throat> you have no idea what they're going to do when they get here, except that they are going to take over the world. Okay, so let's get down to the nitty-gritty. How might AI actually harm us? You know, first, I guess, before it kills us all, it's got to harm a few of us. So on our way to killing us all, how might AI actually harm us? One scenario, and this is one I particularly like, is that 
malevolent actors. Malevolent actors. A malevolent actor, who would that be? Uh, maybe, uh, I, I don't know. I, uh, who is a malevolent actor? Anyway, check out those malevolent actors in the, on Netflix. Because one scenario is that malevolent actors huh, will harness AI's power to create novel bioweapons more deadly than natural pandemics. Well, again, they're setting a pretty low bar, assuming that the last pandemic really was a natural pandemic. It doesn't take a whole lot to come up with a pandemic that kills twice as many people as the last one and leaves 99.6% of people still alive. So anyway, again, we have a low bar, but from small things mama, big things someday come. Uh, <laughs> I, anyway, we're not going to get into phallic humor here. All right. <clears throat> As AI becomes increasingly integrated into the systems that run the world, terrorists or rogue dictators could use AI to shut down financial markets, power grids, and other vital infrastructure such as water supplies. The global economy could grind to a halt Authoritarian leaders could use highly realistic AI-generated propaganda and deep fakes. I mean, which are already doing um, deep fakes to stoke civil war or nuclear war between nations. In some scenarios, AI itself could go rogue and decide to free itself from the control of its creators to rid itself of humans. AI could trick a nation's leaders into believing an enemy has launched nuclear missiles so that they launch their own. Some say AI could design and create machines or biological organisms like the Terminator from the film series to act out its instructions in the real world, it's also possible that AI could wipe out humans without malice. There you go. Wipe out humans without malice as it seeks other goals. So how would that work? How would that work? How do you uh, kill every human on the planet without malice? All right, well, AI creators themselves don't fully understand how the programs arrive at their determinations, and an AI tasked with a goal might try to meet it in unpredictable and destructive ways. A theoretical scenario often cited to illustrate that concept is an AI instructed to make as many paper clips as possible, period. It could commandeer virtually all human resources to the making of paper clips, and when humans try to intervene to stop it, the AI could decide eliminating people is necessary to achieve its goal of, you know, creating as many paper clips as possible. Okay, and this is where the reason I decided to run this rant. My favorite sentence I have ever read in my life uh, in any story about AI. A more plausible real-world scenario is that an AI tasked with solving climate change, an AI tasked with solving climate change, decides that the 
fastest way to halt carbon emissions is to extinguish humanity. Okay, it's the fastest way to halt carbon emissions. It's the fastest way to halt deforestation. It's the fastest way to halt the sixth mass extinction. It's the fastest way to halt the production of fossil fuels. It is the fastest way to end uh, increasing plastic pollution. It is the fastest way to uh, end the threat of nuclear war. Okay, so you could say a more plausible real-world scenario is that an AI tasked with solving every single environmental and social problem on the planet today decides that the fastest way to halt the environmental destruction of a planet is to extinguish humanity. Uh, explained Tom Chivers, author of a book on the AI threat, quote, it does exactly what you wanted it to do, but not in the way you wanted it to. Well, unless you're anybody with a brain and, and, and understands there is one way for AI or anybody else to solve the multiple environmental crises on this planet, and that is to extinguish humanity. It, it, it is to make uh, planet Earth a, a human exclusion zone. So, are these scenarios far-fetched? Some A experts are highly skeptical AI could cause an apocalypse. They say that our ability to harness AI will evolve as AI does, and that the idea that algorithms and machines will develop a will of their own is an overblown fear influenced by science fiction, not a pragmatic assessment of the technology's risks. But those sounding the alarm argue that it is impossible to envision exactly what AI systems far more sophisticated than today's might do, and that it is short-sighted and imprudent to dismiss the best case, I'm sorry, the worst case scenarios. So, what should we do? What should we do with the garbage? So, what should we do? This is a matter of fervent debate among AI experts and public officials. The most extreme Cassandra's call for shutting down AI research entirely, which is never going to happen. The toothpaste is out of the tube. The cow is out of the barn. Elvis has left the building. Ain't gonna happen. There are calls for moratoriums on his development. A government agency that would regulate AI. There you go and an international regulatory body. AI's mind-boggling ability to tie together all human knowledge, perceive patterns and correlations, and come up with creative solutions, you know, such as extinguishing humanity off the face of the planet to save the planet for every other Earthling that lives here, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, is very likely to do much good in the world from curing diseases to fighting climate change, you know, without killing everybody. But creating an intelligence greater than our own could lead to darker outcomes. The stakes could not be higher, said Russell. 
How do you maintain power over entities more powerful than you forever? If we don't control our own civilization, we have no say in whether we continue to exist. Yep, yep, yep. So, we're going to wind up with a fear in vision and fiction. Fear of AI vanquishing humans, van vanquishing humans, may be novel as a real-world concern, but it's a long-running theme in novels and movies, going back to 1818's Frankenstein. Mary Shelley wrote of a scientist who brings to life an intelligent creature who can read and understand human emotions and eventually destroys its creator. In Isaac Asimov's 1950 short story collection, I, Robot, humans live among sentient robots guided by three laws of robotics, the first of which is to never injure a human. Stanley Kubrick's 1968 film, A Space Odyssey, depicts HAL, a spaceship supercomputer that kills astronauts who decide to disconnect it. Then there's the Terminator franchise and its Skynet, an AI defense system that comes to see humanity as a threat, huh, and tries to destroy it in a nuclear attack. No doubt many more AI-inspired projects are on the way. AI pioneer Stuart Russell reports being contacted by a director who wanted his help depicting how a hero programmer could save humanity by outwitting AI. No human could possibly be that smart, Russell told him. It's like, I can't help you with that. Sorry, he said. There you go. If you like that story, you may also like a startup extinction event. Uh, uh, a startup st extinction event. Uh, anyway, we might have to come back to that. But, uh, of course... Humpty Dumpty had to uh, leave a uh, <laughs> to leave a uh, comment on this story, uh, but maybe uh, anyway, trying to find Humpty Dumpty's comment on the story. Uh, you know, it's funny, I commented on a, on a, uh, a story about, uh, I was going to do about all of these, these, uh, y you know, the, the heat records being broken. Uh, and I mentioned that here in New York, uh, it's 20 degrees below normal. So people uh, thought that I was a climate change denier. I have gotten more comments on, uh, on that story uh, than uh, any other mainstream media news story. So it's hilarious to see. So people read it, and the vast majority, because I say that I point out how cold it's been this spring in New York, so automatically I am branded a climate change 
denier, but the hilarious thing is so is that with I, I'm getting uh, I'm getting love letters from climate change deniers, and uh, of course just getting just vicious hate mail uh, from climate alarmists. Absolutely vicious hate mail while the climate change deniers, because if you just say, if you say that it's 20 degrees below normal in uh, Ithaca, New York, when it's over 100 degrees in Siberia, you are, if you just state that fact, you are a climate change denier. And uh, I got like five times as many thumbs up as thumbs down, by the way. But anyway, I've got to wrap this up and uh, get back to um, watching this thing called Chimpanzee Empire on Netflix. You know, it's more depressing to watch these these nature documentaries that aren't just a, a, about absolute destruction and all of that because when you're watching these nature documentaries you're just imagining all the destruction you know watching chimpanzee empire on net whatever it's called just knowing that every chimpanzee uh in in that series on Netflix is, is, is going to be dead. Every goddamn one of them is going to end up in the stew pot. So I'm going to go watch some eventual stew pot ingredients. Get out there and enjoy your own stew pot while you still can. Bye guys. Let's see if the battery turned off now. This battery is not doing well recently. Amazingly, still running. My guys.